welcome to the calendar guide. Uh, here we're going to be talking about the regular calendar as well as an add-on called group calendar. We're going to start with the regular one. Uh, when you bring this up on your mini-map, this is usually what you see. You can filter di various different things to see on your map, uh, like the battleground, call to arms, darkmoon fair, active raid lockouts if you have any. I don't at the moment. And when your raids and your dungeons reset. You can also track uh, weekly holidays like the fishing derbies if you wish. And to turn that off, you can just click on the filters. But the important thing about the calendar is your different events. Now, when your guild um, says, hey, sign up for such and such event, you're like, well, how do I do that? Well, this is how you, where you do that. Um, if you come to an event and you right-click on it, you'll bring up this little menu. Now, if you have the ability from your guild leader to create events, then you'll get these first three um, options. For those of you who don't, these options will not be there or will be grayed out. And here you can either um, accept the invitation to the event, say that you're tentative, this means that you may or may not be there, or you can remove the invitation. Now, this doesn't delete the event, it just removes it from your calendar. So that's your right click. Now if you left click on it, it opens the event itself. And once again you have these accept, tentative, remove, decline um, buttons that you saw in the right click menu. Now for this particular one I've chosen decline so that one's grayed out because I've already picked it. Now in here you see um, you know, the event name, what type it is, uh, in this case it's an other, um, we weren't doing a specific raid so um, it was put under other, uh, you can see who created it and you know your date and time. And then down here you get a list of all the people who are invited, who's confirmed, accepted, tentative, and who's declined. And then along the side here you can see who has accepted based on their particular role. So that can be um, helpful in determining your raid composition before you start. Now to go to the create events, this one's uh, one that I've made. Um, once again, right click and you can click on create event, create guild event, or create guild announcement. And there is a big difference between these three. Or the, the difference between create event and create guild event is a create event will create a private event that you will need to invite specific people to, otherwise it won't show up on their calendars. If you want to create something that's for your entire guild, you want to create on create a guild event which will show up to all of your guild members. And then if you click on guild announcement, this will just bring up a little window that you can put in a name, your particular announcement type, a time, and a description. This will not allow invites. So let's um, open up this particular one that I've created. And if you, if you click on the create event or create guild event, you'll get the same window, only it'll be blank. And uh, this one, um, you can give it a name. We're going to be running some classic raids. Um, we don't have anything specifically in mind, so um, it, I put it under an other. You do have the option of picking a specific raid if you wish to do that. You have um, all of the raids available on this little drop-down menu. You can just pick one. Or you could do, you know, dungeons. Here's all the dungeons. Um, same thing for heroic dungeons. And then you, um, if you click on PvP, it'll just bring up the menu with the little PvP icon, and you can uh, click on, and you can put in a description and put in a time. So we'll leave this at other uh, because we're not going to have a specific grade in mind. And then um, you know you can type in your description, and you have a little drop-down menu for your time. If you click on mass invite, um, it will invite based on a filter. And here you can change the levels. Um, you know, for raids, usually you have to be level 60, so we can change it to level 60 to 85, which is the current um, highest level. You can put in a minimum rank. These are the, all of the different ranks for our guild. Your rank names will be in there for your guild. And then um, you can click accept and it'll invite automatically all those people that are, um, so this in this case, level 60 and above. Now if you click on this lock event, this will remove the ability to accept 
tentative or decline events for all the people that are invited. So you don't want to have this on if you want people to sign up for your race or event. So that's pretty much it for the regular calendar. We're going to show you um, add-on called group calendar. And this one, uh, your filters up above there, just move down here to the bottom. You can once again, you know, show Darkling Fair, weekly events, so on and so forth if you wish. But the difference here is you have more options as a event creator. So we're going to open this event. Um, if you left click on it, it'll bring up a list of events for that particular day. So if you have more than one thing going on, you'll see an entire list of these you can click on that particular event to open up the event itself. Now down here along the bottom you have different tabs. You have the event description where you can click on uh, yes, which is accept, maybe, I'm not sure yet, is tentative, no is decline, and you have um, you know the name of the event, date, time, how long it's going to last, uh, what levels can be part of this, and a description. If you click on the Edit tab, this brings up the event editor itself, uh, similar to the um, event window in the classic calendar. It just has things a little bit different, and it does give you the option of selecting a duration, which was not available in the regular calendar. And then the Sign Ups Closed is the same thing as the lock that you saw in the regular calendar. And then, like the Mass Invite, um, you have the option to type in uh, levels here if you want to change the level requirement for this particular event. And then down at the bottom, you have the option to either delete the event, copy it, and then this apply means to apply changes. So if I were to copy this event, um, if I were to click on this, it just copies it to a clipboard that you don't see, and you can click on another date, and you can, collect, you can select paste to paste your event. Now, this will paste, um, if it's a guild event, it will paste all the invites to your guild. If it's a private event, it will just pa paste the event details itself, but you still have to re-invite everybody. Now, if you go to the group tab, this will show you who has signed up for this event. And as a raid leader, um, you have the option to either confirm this person or put them on standby. and if you have several people, you know, say you've got a 10-man raid that you're doing and you've got 15 people signed up, you can confirm just those people that you want in that particular event and then the rest of them can be on standby. This way your members know if they're expected to be there or if they can go quest or something, you know, while they're waiting for an opening. The other thing that you have in this is a little drop-down menu that opens up this uh, window that um, has various different options and once again you can you know change their status you can remove a member from a status you can tell them um, you know whether they're confirmed you can say hey you know you're on standby or you can say hey we will definitely not need you for this particular event so you can click on out and they'll know and then the other interesting thing is this one right here called grant moderator status this basically gives somebody the ability to change your event. So, um, you know, if you're a guild leader and you have a um, raid leader, you can uh, create events and then put your raid leader as a moderator status. And then they have all of the abilities to change events and uh, change people out that you would do as the event creator. And then one more is you have the ability here to invite this person to the party or raid. So this is an easy way to invite people instead of having to type in the name, invite, so-and-so. And then you also have the option to change their role to, you know, whatever role they, um, you need for this particular event. Um, in this case, we have a warlock. Warlocks are just ranged DPS, so we'll leave her at ranged DPS. Um, for somebody who's a melee who could do tank or melee, um, you can change that and then um, it'll show up as either tank or melee in uh, the list. And then, um, you know, in your list you can sort this by class, status, role, so on and so forth. And then one other button I want to talk about is this start button. This is 
kind of a mass invite for everybody, so if you have an event that's occurring, you can just click on Start and it'll automatically invite everybody that's confirmed on the list. And that's everything for the Group tab. Let's look at the Invite tab. Now the Invite tab's a little bit different. Um, this is like your mass invite in the regular calendar uh, for a guild event. It will automatically invite all of your guild ranks. You're welcome to open these up and invite specific people in that particular rank, or you can, um, you know, remove the rank completely and say you just want, you know, certain ranks to be to this particular event. It also gives you the ability to invite people from guilds that you have an alliance with. Um, in this case, we have two guilds that we have an alliance with, and then, um, you know, we're welcome to invite specific p people um, based on their rank in those guilds. And then, of course, you can invite um, individual people by just typing in their name and click Invite. Well, one thing I forgot to mention is your friends list. Um, this will open up the list of all of your friends that in your, um, if you click on O and you go to friends, this is your whole list there. So you're welcome to invite people that way as well. So that's pretty much it um, for the calendars. Once again, uh, keep in mind the difference between a event and a guild event. Uh, this is where a lot of people get confused because they'll click on create event and they'll create an event and say, oh, I've got this event created and then people will say, no, I can't see it. Um, if you click on create event, once again, this is going to be a private event. So um, if you're creating something for your guild, you want to make sure that you click on the guild event. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this is a little bit helpful and good luck with your own event creation.